Welcome to the second devlog for the careerfair.dev site. In this video, I'm gonna talk all about choosing the technologies for the code that I wrote, all the different problems I run into, and how I actually debug these issues because there are tons of problems that came up. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream projects sooner. And this is the second devlog for my careerfair.dev project. If you missed the first one, it'll be linked up here somewhere as well as in the description. But for this one, I wanna talk all about the, kind of the first steps I made with writing out the code. The first devlog was all about everything that went up to writing the first line of code. And this is going to be things such as choosing the technologies as well as writing out the first bits of code. Now the first part you need to figure out before you actually write any code is obviously what technologies you're going to choose. For me, I ended up choosing that I wanted to do this using Next.js, TypeScript, and Firebase. Now you may be wondering why I chose those technologies because you notice I don't really cover any of those on this channel. I've covered Firebase a little bit, but Next.js and TypeScript are something that I've never covered on this channel. And that's actually part of the reason I chose these technologies. I wanted to learn TypeScript better. I know it a little bit, but not that well. And I never really used Next.js, so I wanted to learn that better as well. And Firebase is something I've used a little bit, but again, don't know that well. So I was like, I really want to learn Firebase as well. So I figured, you know what is a great idea for a project? I'm going to choose three technologies I know almost nothing about and use them to learn. Now, that's a terrible idea. I just want to say it right now, that is a terrible idea because if you want to build a project and your goal is to make a successful project, you shouldn't use technologies you're not familiar with. You should choose technologies you know well and stuff that you're really strong in. So I should have chose something like JavaScript and I should have chose a backend like Node that I'm really familiar in and used like Postgres or Mongo, which I'm really familiar with. But instead I went this other route because these are things that I wanted to learn. And that's okay because for me, this project is not so much about getting the project working. Like obviously I want that to happen, but even if the project fails miserably, I care more about the things that I learned from it because from this, I can create a TypeScript course. I can create a Next course. I can create tutorials on TypeScript, Next, Firebase, and so on on the YouTube channel. So even if the project fails, I at least have all these skills that I can learn and apply towards my business for teaching you with courses or YouTube videos. So once you choose your technologies, the first step of any project is like start building out the MVP, but it was a little bit different for me since I was so new to a lot of these technologies, especially Next.js, which was like the backbone for the entire project, that I really spent quite a bit of my beginning time just playing around with Next, playing around with TypeScript, and like figuring out how things worked. I just kind of experimented with the different things, tried to figure out like some best practices around Next and TypeScript to figure out, you know what, how is the best thing for me going to work? Like how do people integrate Firebase and Next you know, in their own applications. So I did a lot of research and reading and figuring out like, how does this work? How does this work? How does this happen? And I just experimented. So I spent quite a bit of time at the beginning just experimenting before I started really building anything. Then the next step that I did was start to build the MVP. And for me, the very first thing I built was just the authentication portion. And the reason for that is not because it's the best thing to build first, because really it's not, but because I already have a tutorial on Firebase authentication using React, which is essentially what Next.js uses. So I figured, you know what, I'm just gonna take the code from that tutorial, copy paste it directly into my project essentially and tweak it to my needs. And that actually worked really well. I was able to get authentication set up really, really quickly. So being able to take that tutorial code, copy and paste it in and just tweak it was really nice. So I was able to get something working and I was able to kind of figure out how it worked in Next because things in Next were slightly different than just doing it in normal React. So I was able to kind of take something I was familiar with and implement it in something I'm unfamiliar with, which made me feel much more comfortable because all the problems I encountered, I knew that they were to deal with Next specifically and not so much to deal with, you know, the code I'd written before. I also took that code and converted it over to TypeScript. So again, I didn't have to worry about running into issues with maybe my code was broken or maybe it was TypeScript, I didn't know. I knew for a fact the code worked. The only issue was whether I had TypeScript errors. So by taking code I was familiar with and using that for you know starting with Next and starting with TypeScript, it helped me to make sure I didn't make any errors and it made it more of an enjoyable process. Now the next thing that I decided to work on was to figure out what kind of data I needed on all my different pages. One really important thing when dealing with NoSQL databases, specifically databases like Firebase, is that you need to focus on what data you need on each page and then try to store your data in a way that it's very easy to access the data you need on a page without getting a bunch of other information or doing a bunch of extra queries. So I thought about, you know, what do I need on the dashboard page? What do I need on the career fair page? What do I need on the video page, the job page, and so on? And I just tried to think as much as I could about this. But this is hard to do because I didn't really have any of the app built, so I wasn't really sure what I all needed. I kind of had some ideas on what I needed, but these things changed constantly. I constantly was like, you know what? This would be a better way to do this. This would be a better way to do this. 
So in this early stage, I had a lot of tweaking and going back and forth with things thinking, you know, this would be the best way. And then a week later, I was like, no, no, this is the best way. So I made a lot of back and forth changes. And this is something I recommend not doing. This was a mistake that I made because it meant I spent a lot of time rewriting the same code over and over again, just doing it different in different ways until I found the right way to do it. When we both know that there's no right way to do it, there's just one way and then there's another way. They're both correct as long as they work. So I spent a lot of time writing code I really didn't need to write. Another thing that I ran into a lot when I was trying to deal with Firebase and TypeScript is that the normal Firebase, you know, library that has TypeScript built in isn't that type safe. There was a lot of extra type safety I had to write around the Firebase library to, in order to make it actually work properly, which meant I spent a ton of time on Stack Overflow trying to look at TypeScript examples, a ton of time in the TypeScript documentation, and a ton of time experimenting with TypeScript types because I was writing some fairly complicated TypeScript code, at least for me. It was complicated TypeScript types that had a lot of conditionals inside of it to make sure that all of the Firebase stuff was take into account the types of my different models and objects that I was using. Because by default, it just says, hey, did you pass a string? That's a key, okay. Did you pass a string that's a value? Okay, that's all we care about. It didn't care anything at all about the actual strings being strings of the keys in your object or the values being the correct type for that thing. It just didn't care. So I kind of didn't really like that feeling at all. So I tried to implement that myself and I spent a lot of time on that, but I'm really glad I did because once I got that implemented, my development experience became so much quicker because I was able to get really good type safety and IntelliSense on all of my Firebase related code. Now the next main portion of the project I work on was like the profile section. So the ability for you to create a user profile with all your information, as well as company profiles, employee profiles, all the profile related stuff that I needed was kind of my next step because it was something I'm familiar with. I know how to create a CRUD form, which just has, you know, inputs that take in values and save those values to a database. So it's something I'm really familiar with. I've done a million times before. It's just, I've never done it with Next, TypeScript and Firebase. So again, it was something I was able to be familiar with on one front, but have something unfamiliar on the other front. So I was able to combine them together without being unfamiliar in both regards. Like if I tried to create a live video chat platform at the same time as learning Next and Firebase and TypeScript, it would have been a nightmare because I'm unfamiliar with both of those. So this was a really nice mix where I was able to kind of figure out how to use both of these together. And I did a lot of things that I would have changed in the end because I, you know, didn't really know how TypeScript worked that well. I didn't really know how Firebase worked that well. So I had a lot of kind of like hacky code. I don't really want to say it was hacky, but it just wasn't very clean. And that was fine. When you're creating your MVP, your code can be messy, it can be dirty. That's okay. It's kind of meant to be that way because you're trying to get to your product as quick as possible and you don't really care about how clean the code is. So I was writing stuff that was like not the most clean. I was copy pasting a lot of stuff that maybe should have been in a function or, you know, maybe should have been saved somewhere else. But I was like, whatever, I'm just trying to figure out how this works. I don't know what the best way to do things is yet. So I'm just going to continue to do it this way. And then when I figured out a new way to do something, I was like, oh, you know what? I'll try doing it a different way here and a different way here. And I experimented with doing like the same thing four or five different ways across my application until I decided, okay, you know what? This one way is the way that I think I should do this going forward. And once I decided that, I decided, okay, I'm gonna take all these other ways, I'm gonna get rid of them, replace them with the correct way, and then I'm gonna abstract that to like a function. So I created a custom hook for a bunch of different Firebase related things. And those custom hooks have all of my TypeScript safety built in. And also they have all of these extra things that I learned from using TypeScript and Firebase across a large portion of my application. I learned a bunch of things and I took all those learnings and put them into that hook. So that way everything I needed was in that one simple hook and I could change it as needed, but really it made working with the rest of my app so much easier. So at this point, I essentially have built up the authentication and user profiles. I built up the company profiles, like user accounts, all the stuff related to profiles and sign in and login. And most importantly, I'd done a ton of backend refactoring kind of work, getting my types, making these custom hooks, and I spent a lot of time on this kind of stuff. And then my next step was to move on to building out like the dashboard page, as well as like the job listings portion for all the jobs that these companies are having listing for people to apply and interview for in the career fair. And this is something that was newer to me. I mean, it wasn't like as new to me as something like a video chat platform, but it was newer in that it wasn't quite as simple and straightforward as just a basic form. But the nice thing was I had all these utility functions and experience built up from this other section that even though this was slightly more new and less familiar, I was able to build this section up way quicker than the user profiles. And that was again, because I knew kind of what I was doing with experience and I had all these custom hooks and custom functions and TypeScript definitions built up that just made writing the code a breeze. So I was so glad that after I kind of tweaked and played around with this, that I spent a significant amount of time. I mean, it probably took me a couple of weeks, maybe in a full month to refactor all of my code and build everything out into all the utility functions and so on. But by doing that, I saved myself so much time going forward. And I'm really glad that I ended up doing that. 
Now, one thing you'll notice from all this conversation in this video though, is that I've spent a lot of time on the code and not very much time on actually getting people to the app. I have mentioned this project in quite a few YouTube videos and I have a lot of users signed up for the application, but I have almost no companies signed up for the application because I haven't reached out to any. And the main thing holding me back from reaching out is that my landing page looks like this. That's right, I don't really have a landing page. So what I really need to do is I need to change the landing page, make a good looking landing page, that way I can reach out to companies and be like, hey, come use this thing. They have the landing page that they can see and they can go on and be like, oh, this is awesome, I want to use this. So that is my next step. I really wanna build out this landing page and then finish writing the rest of the code once I get some companies in there and I can start actually planning out when the next career fair will be. So that is what the next devlog is going to be about. And if you missed the first devlog, it's gonna be linked over here as well as the next devlog when that comes out. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.